Today we're going to talk about Windows is starting to roll out their cloud-only PC system. This is not something entirely new, but this is a step towards pushing Windows into the cloud and starting to normalize this. Let's go ahead and discuss this on this Windows Wednesday. Thanks for checking out this video by Switch to Linux. Of course, over here we talk about Linux, why we should switch to Linux, free and open source software. Effectively, all this boils down to two basic principles, privacy and control over your own systems. Well, in today's video, we are going to look at Windows is starting to roll out in enterprise versions first, their cloud only box. And we're going to talk about this, the histories, the origins, and a little bit about where the direction could be going. Is this a good thing or a bad thing? If you like this type of content, please feel free to subscribe to the channel and leave us a like and a comment down below. And with that, let's go ahead and jump on in. So this boils down to an article released and uh, Ars Technica had a good write up of it. So Windows 365 Link, this is their new little box. This is $349 and it is a thin client for Windows in the cloud. So if you remember Windows in the cloud, this is actually not a brand new concept. This was your PC in the cloud. This is called Windows 365. Now, as of right now, it is not for the end user. It is for business, for enterprise, for frontline, or for government. Um, and so you have a number of different options here you can look at. Now, there were rumblings last year around uh, July of last year, 2023, that was talking about some people noticing some code in the consumer and home users for Windows 11, suggesting that this type of connection is in the works. So that was reported on a while ago, and we haven't heard anything about it since then. So over a year. And now we have this new box rolled out. So this little box is a very small, lightweight box. There is no GPU in there. We don't know what processors in there. Uh, we know that they have eight or 16, uh, excuse me, uh, eight gigs of RAM, 16, uh, 64 gigabytes of storage. And effectively, it just runs a streamlined version of Windows, which only serves the purpose to connect you to the Internet. There is a little bit of hardware acceleration for when you're doing video, watching video. Video encoding is done on this box to save some of the cloud resources. Other than that, there's no GPU in this device. So the ultimate purpose of this is to have a workstation where you set it up, you push the button, and you are instantly on the cloud. Now, these, like tablets, are working on this always on type model where you just click the power button, which unlike the Mac is on the front. You can click it without picking the thing up, wiggling it, wobbling it, possibly damaging cords behind it. Uh, the power button's on the front. Good job, Microsoft engineers. You know how to engineer something. It has a single USB port on the front. It has two USB-A ports on the back, one USB-C port on the back, an Ethernet port, presumably gigabit or higher. They didn't specify that. And it has, uh, obviously, the power connections and a, uh, a lock on it. So, of course, you can lock the thing down. Now, this type of concept, this mode of running a computer is not entirely new. Uh, in fact, um, even way back years ago when I was a college professor, this is how all the colleges were. Worked. Most businesses, this is how your business, business enterprise system works. Now, in those days, though, we had a standard computer. It had Microsoft installed on it. It had the programs installed on it, but there was no data on it. There's effectively no hard drive storage on that. All of the storage and everything else, that was all in in the, the it wasn't the cloud. It was the, the LAN network for the university. So you use a VPN from home to be able to access your files when you're not at home. That's, of course, what a VPN was created for. Uh, not privacy on the Internet, necessarily. Uh, it was created to be able to access the network resources when you were not inside the network. And, uh, of course, in those days, you had to buy the standard computer, although you could buy a little bit lower of a spec one, possibly, depending on what you're doing. And then each workstation just simply had the same shell of programs you would, could log into any of the workstations on campus with your login and everything would work just fine and no data was stored 
locally. That really was the effectively how things ran for a long time. What this approach is doing is the entire instance of your Windows is in the cloud. There is no software installed on this little thin line device. There is nothing on it except effectively an embedded Windows system serving no other purpose than to connect you to the internet and then go right on up into the cloud where you access a Windows 365, which is an entirely cloud-based system. So there's no power on system. Your Windows cloud-based is always powered on. And your workstation in this instance works effectively, as I said, like a tablet. All you do is you click the button, it's instantly turned on, and now you can access your device. Now, what they do have differently is they do have the ability to port your, uh, your hardware up into that. So there is some virtual link between those. Uh, FIDO keys, like your YubiKey, works on this device. So if you're using that to verify 2FA on some given account, you can work that perfectly fine. There's no issues there. And so with that, uh, this is a new device that is rolling out. We have some pictures of it over here. You can see, look at this lovely power button right on the front, easy to get to. You can simply push it. I know that does kind of break that sleek, perfect, flawless design that Apple wants to get, but it is practical to have the power button on the front of the device. Makes sense. Uh, of course, they have their USB port there, and then on the back we have USB-C, two A's. We have a full HDMI, we have a full Display Port, Ethernet, uh, and we have the power as well. Now, the entirety of this right now is aimed currently towards your enterprise, uh, your cons uh, your businesses. And uh, looking at Microsoft's actual page about this, you can go ahead, see if they actually had this thing here and you saw this little cloud thing going up. I might buy one just for the aesthetics of it. I don't know, maybe we need to get something like that. But anyway, uh, here is the, the entire page. What they're saying is that this has more security in it. It's uh, obviously everything is cloud powered. It's more secure. There's no way to actually store data. In fact, your administrator can prevent you from being able to copy any data from your workstation onto a USB drive. Again, that is an enterprise feature you might want you might be in a high sense of work environment whereby you don't want people to risk stealing out data. I mean, we don't need some Snowden thing where an actual legitimate whistleblower actually legitimately gets out the um, data that you shouldn't be doing out to the public, you know. Uh, but in this instance, you, the administrator, the IT person running the cloud infrastructure this connects to can prevent the end user from being able to download any data onto the local device. So you have no control over this. Um, this is about the uh, IT management and then of course their sustainability. It's uh, uh, Energy Star certified, created with 50% recycled content, blah, blah, blah. Uh, certainly an energy saver. Now they do have a video here. Uh, you can watch the video over there on YouTube. We're not going to go through that right now, but uh, it's a five minute video. It's nice, informative, and uh, in it they explain how you can log in. Uh, you set it up with either the a phone app or you set it up with a uh, you know any other way that you're doing multi-factor authentication to get into your device. You can go ahead and get that all set up, and then everything works fairly flawlessly on your uh, on your desktop. And then there's just some basic FAQs. Now, this again is for connecting your. Uh, Windows 365, which as of right now is only for business sectors. However, as I said, back in July of last year, there is some code embedded in Windows 11 that seems to suggest that they are working on a Windows 365 for consumers. And that really is the question that we have as we are looking at this type of technology. Do we need a circumstance where every aspect of our computer is entirely at the hands of the company? Now, as long as we get to the point, uh, or we don't rather get to the point where you have no control over your system, if we can always have in an offline mode, a Windows computer sitting here, I can turn on if the internet's out, even the power's out, I can run it on battery for a while, I can turn it on and I can do some local thing. As long as we always have that option, that's going to be good. However, I wanna point out to the directions that the world is going. We look at the software packages. You can no longer buy a standalone Adobe software that will run on your system. It needs that internet connection. In fact, there was uh, one channel I've talked about many times before. I think it was like J. 
Gacy, Christina or something. I can't remember. He is a graphic designer and he's like, I'm going to go up and hike on top of this mountain. I'm going to take my MacBook with me and I'm going to go up there and I'm going to work on the top of the mountain because it'll be a cool, trendy thing to do. He gets up there, realizes he cannot even launch his Photoshop to do the offline work he wanted to do because the system will not work without an internet connection. We're getting more software like that. Obviously, you have the Office 365. There are offline components of that, but they do really prefer you to be on the internet. And even Windows 11 itself is getting to the point where it does not want you, and they're actively getting around those ways to set up a Windows 11 computer if you do not have an active internet connection. They want to force you to have an internet connection. They want to force you to have a Microsoft account. They want to force you to have all of these online components. So it is the logical step, the logical progression by which we move from this Windows on your desktop to this Windows in the cloud. And of course, if the Windows 365 reaches the consumer and becomes more normalized, obviously there are people that this makes a lot of sense for. You know, buying one little $300 device for the person that simply needs to get on social media, check your email and browse the web, that is a, a good device for that type of instance. The problem is it connects directly up. Number one, we need good internet. Here in America, that's not always a good thing you can get. But you also need a system which is completely out of your control. You can't install software on this. Windows 365, you can't install software on it. You can't do anything else outside of what is in the box. And presumably this means going back to that model where everything has to be curated by Windows. You can run the Adobe software because it's curated in the Windows store. But you can't run a cool program.exe that you have downloaded off of the internet even though you know it's legitimate or at least strongly suspect it's legitimate. We need to get to this point where we have those options to maintain that. And this is why I like Linux. As Windows is moving towards a slow progression to move you entirely on the cloud, entirely out of your control, and entirely living every aspect of your computing life on the internet, where, by the way, Microsoft controls the servers, they can see your data, they can spy on you, they can use AI to determine are you up to no good so they can go and snitch to their buddies over there at the DOJ or something. I want a system that is perpetually offline. I want a system that's perpetually off of the internet as long as I want it to be. And I want a system that if I'm somewhere on a remote mountain, I can still boot up my laptop. I don't have to get on the internet. I can boot up my photo editing. I can do the type of work I need to do on top of my cool mountain. And then I come right on back down and then we are good. And that's why I like Linux. I don't like this progression towards Windows. I don't like this progression towards cloud-based. I don't like this progression towards AI. I don't like this progression towards you have no control over anything in the device. Yes, this particular device is commercial, but we are seeing the code for this in the consumer level. We are seeing some experimentation and exploration of it. And we are seeing this normalization of everything being online and in the cloud. That is the world I do not want to get to. This is why I encourage you to look at free and open source software, which you can use without being perpetually connected to the internet. Look at operating systems like Linux, even BSD and things that you can use without being online so that you have the freedom and the flexibility. A, you have the privacy. You don't have some company getting in there and just reaching their tendrils all over the stuff you're doing. Ooh, I'm going to make sure you're not up to anything bad. You know, this is like worse than 1984 here, you know, because the AI computer never sleeps and can watch everybody simultaneously. At least in 1984, the telescreen might always show what you're doing, but there was no way to store that data and somebody may not be watching your screen. It's just the fear that somebody might be watching the screen is what held you in, in line. In this instance here, the AI never sleeps and the AI stores all data so it can sift through it later. I don't want that world. I want to get into the world where I am presumed innocent until proven guilty. And that is where our software can help us be in that general approach. Just get off the internet have control over your system, install something. And by the way, you can get Linux to run really well on a device that's $350 or less these days, even in this economy. So there are options out there. Uh, this is not like Windows is doing this today. It's just Windows is moving in this general direction. Are you prepared for that? Have you 
developed your exit strategy when the interstate is barreling into the mouth of a steaming volcano? Have you chosen your exit ramp to go smoothly on down the mountain and into the Valley of Peace. That is my thought. And I will leave you uh, today with a video on those first steps towards switching to Linux so you can get a chance to have a look at that. With that, guys, thank you for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.